Hi everyone, in today's video we're gonna look at how we go from a sketch on an iPad all the way to an image generated AI. Uh, we will run through a couple of aspects to it, how to clean up the sketch, what to use in Stable Diffusion to get the most of the sketch, and how to write prompt. So you probably ask yourself, why would I use Stable Diffusion and not other type of AI tool such as Midjourney or other? First thing, it's 100% free. So you can um, go online, download it, and you can have it on your computer, on your local machine. The second aspect is it's an open source software, and it's got a huge community that contribute to the platform. Third thing is probably that everything is running locally on your computer. So um, when you train a model, when you put a sketch, nothing goes on the cloud. Uh, everything stays on your machine and your graphic card is doing the hard work, uh, processing the data and the image. And finally, um, what's amazing with Stable Diffusion is, at least for architect and designer, is ControlNet. ControlNet is an add-in for Stable Diffusion where you can actually input some information. So you're not only typing a prompt with a couple of keywords, but you can also input sketches, um, screenshot, photos, anything you want to influence the outcome of the, the image, which is amazing as an architect. And we'll run through in my videos in a couple of ways we could actually use that process to help with the, with the architecture. I have a look at, you know, sort of what I see, the landscapes, um, and then a couple of trees in there, a couple of bushes there. Um, and then, so I have this this really beautiful sort of site where um, you know you can very quickly sort of imagine uh, the project. Um, and then what I what I would like to do is um, I'm just gonna create a new layer, and this is gonna be like the layer I will use in Stable Diffusion actually to provide a bit of a design. So let's say I want something quite um, sort of nice and volumetrically um, appealing. So maybe I was just, just something really simple, like maybe like, you know, something that sits on the, on the, on the side, but has like really sort of large openings. And then I'll just hide that. And then maybe like, you know, just these really simple volumes. And then maybe inside here, I got like, some sort of a terrace or something that sort of you know show you a bit of a view where people could potentially sit down so i'm not gonna add too much data into it um i could definitely you know keep sort of drawing on on top here sort of understanding the sense of scale people sitting down could add a bit of a color just to sort of talk to the client or, or sort of explain what what I, I believe uh, could work um, and then sort of you know maybe this double height space where behind you get like this nice double height space and then potentially like I don't know maybe there will be like nice sort of opening here so I'm just going back on the layer maybe I'll have like a nice sort of opening here um, and then I'll just draw sort of, you know, the horizon line. And I think I don't really want more than that for now, just to see and test it. So, you know, obviously you could sort of start and add more detail in this area. Um, but this is sort of my stable diffusion layer. So I'm just going to call it stable diffusion um, and then I will sort of use uh, use this one to hide this one and I'll export that so um, the first things I want is actually removing all the, um, the grids so I'm just gonna keep that um, and then I will simply I could export it um, could actually export it here so the screenshot All 
right and now I am in a stable diffusion and uh, you can see here I have the realistic vision uh, model here um, so I'm not gonna run through in this video how to install stable diffusion I'll put a couple of links in the description I'll also sort of um, probably do a video later on to explain it um, but what you can do is realistic realistic vision um, 4.1 um, so if you go on there you can you can access on hugging face or on um, civita AI I can access the the model um, so I didn't download the 6.0 I worked still on the on the 5.1 um, so two models are really quite cool that the, the two model here the one I use the most most of the time um, and you can actually download them you know under here uh, download option uh, if you don't train your own model you probably only need those the the small ones um, so I download those ones and what's interesting um, and what you should sort of be aware of is just take the time to have a look at what they say so this is a general advice for all the model you download um, I always like try to get my head around what's happening in that space so um, just because of Screator are on top of their models they know what um, to look for uh, and what to um, to work through so there are a couple of things that you know we're probably not going to talk about in this specific video uh, but the LoRa you can use a LoRa you can also use uh, there's some advice on the scaling and how you could scale potentially scale the image upscale your image um, and then what type of um, upscaler you should use if you do so um, but in this specific video we're just going to focus on the prompt so what I'm interested about is to have a look at what is what is prompt sort of telling me so what I will do is I'll just copy this part here under the prompt so this is for the positive prompt so I'm just going to copy that and this will sort of land at the end of my prompt um, and then I'll have a look at the negative prompt and I'll just use Probably just gonna use. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I think you can use one or the other. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm probably just gonna use this one for the negative prompt. So now I have um, sort of the base that will work with this uh, my model here. Um, I have the base of my prompt. Another things I would like to do is having a look at. Um, uh, the sampling method so um, there are quite a lot of sampling methods if you go back to actually uh, to uh, CVID AI they, they will tell you which uh, which one you should use uh, here but so here they say like either A or DPM plus um, plus SDE CARA so this one is sort of the latest one, uh, DPM++ 2M Keras. So that's the one I usually use uh, with this type of model. Um, so obviously you can use the one they recommend here as well, and then this one here. Um, I wouldn't go with the other ones as they're not recommended for this specific, with this specific model. Um, and other things as well to look for is the sampling step. Uh, at this stage, we're just going to keep it as 20. Um, I saw a couple of people like using it 25, um, but you can keep it as a rule of thumb, you can keep it at 20. Um, now, we're not going to talk about the upscaler in this specific video, um, but you can just choose and uh, download the, the upscaler they ask for and then having it ready to go so what we're going to do here is uh, i'm just going to do um uh 1024 uh, uh by 768 um and then here i'm just going to keep the cfg scale at seven um uh, i'll keep the batch as one for now so this is the batch is basically the number of um, iteration that will go through the process so 
um, it's always good to keep it as one just to test a bit of the, the, the prompt and when you're happy with the prompt and the result that's where you can just bump it and then maybe do a, a batch of 20 and try to get some results um, so the batch count batch size and then here this is where it really become very exciting and uh, as an architect this is the game changer is uh, control net so control net is allowing you to um, to input any images screenshot I will do more video about this but you can basically input a lot of content in there and you will like sort of recognize the, 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 the shape if you use canny or the depth of your images so it will work really well with like those different elements of your image so it can be a screenshot from your uh, Rhino model or SketchUp model or any sort of software you use um, even Revit and then uh, it will generate some images out of that um, so the first things and I will go through I will put some link in the in description to install control net um, as well, but a good things to do for control net is really to um, to download the one I use uh, I'm mostly like canny and depth um, And then for these specific sketches, I also download uh, line arts uh, You can use line art or you can use scribble and sketch. I'll show you a bit of the difference um, Between those two I found line art a bit better with sketch for some reason uh, I saw a couple of videos of people that didn't really like Lionheart um, so we'll see we'll see how we go but all right so we import our image or our sketch um, onto that uh, control net um, one thing to make sure is that you have it enabled here and then we here we have a couple of like options we can use with um, control net most most of them I will do a couple of video about different ones um, but this one for this one, I will use. Um, you can use line arts. So if you use line arts, it's gonna be really accurate. So if you want to do a drawing like that, it's really accurate. Maybe you use a ruler, and you start really detailing and have a lot of really fine-tuned detail. I would recommend to use line art. Here for me, it's really scrubble, <laughs> a sketch that I really done it like quickly. Um, you know, on the spot, on site, or whatever. Um, so it can be really really rough. So I'm just going to use scrubble I'll show you the difference and then after you click on that you have your scrubble here And then you press on the run the preprocessor and then it will show you what would be the result So if I go back to line arts uh, and I press on the on this one so you can see it's very uh, defined and then all the little uh, inaccuracy of my drawing will show on the on the visual eventually So I'm just going to use the scrubble um, so it give it a bit more freedom um, to show me some options. Um, now the second thing I want to do here is I will start to define what I want to show. So um, I have a couple of, um, of options here. Um, one of them will be like to um, um, to start defining the height. So imagine you're like the cameraman or like you know where from where did you sketch the the, the element. So I'm just gonna do award winning uh, eye level level shot uh, and then I will just do a minimalist uh, award winning why not uh, design so that gives me a bit of like you know sort of what to expect and then I'll just start defining some of the materials so I will do wood um, and I will do glass uh, so wood and glass um, and then here I'll start doing like sort of um, specified the cabin is on the ground just gonna do cabin on the ground um maybe i could have put that before but before the glass and um and wood but let's see how that goes and then here i'll just do in uh your in forest and then i'll just add uh, evening time 
uh, dust and uh, I want some artificial light show light uh, and architectural details so that could give you a bit of like sort of high data I guess in architecture um, archi <laughs> architecture uh, details um, and that's it and let's see what uh, comes out so make sure I get the, the, uh, the right definition I press uh, generate and I will see what will come out eventually um, so this will sort of start running um, the preprocessor. There's a way to optimize and to uh, speed up the process. Um, I might show you a bit later on, but um, there's different way you can you can improve that. Um, and there we go. So the first sort of pass, you know, it's it's very blurry. You get a couple of trees at the back, get the volume, and then it refines at the end. Um, so let's have a look at this one. So this is quite interesting, start to have some depth, so it looks like the space is continuous, it's not like a quite, uh, like sort of a closed cube as I had, but uh, could be interested, let's generate another one to see what comes out. What's really nice is you can see that, you know, the artificial light is, is washing onto the, the ground uh, with the forest, we can see like there is... Um, some movement in the forest and then there's some, some stability around the, the house here there's a couple of, of trees a composition so as i as i've done you know like the sketch and the scrubble are very primitive very uh, minimal this is sort of what it gives me in terms of results so i didn't really define where the glass is uh where the facade is where the timber is so we could just sort of go through um, and refine that sketch, but this gives you a bit of an idea of like sort of early on sketch and and, and, and design and how we could uh, use a sketch to get some very quickly um, quickly some images um, or ideas. Uh, there we go. Let's generate the last one, and I think you get the idea. And then so one of the things you can do is when you click on on this little folder, it will pop up here. Um, and then here you have, uh, that's some early, early on sketch I've done, uh, weren't really successful. Um, I can show you them. Um, they weren't quite nice. Um, <laughs> because I just test and reiterate sort of some of the uh, prompt until I get to that prompt, which is quite nice. It's quite similar. Uh, style overall um, but yeah and then you could potentially if you want to you can also batch it and add a couple of, of numbers and then eventually generate and it will generate one after the other and they will save them all in that um, sort of folder that's it for today I hope you enjoyed this video I'll be doing more video about AI architecture and computational design um, in the future on that channel uh, thanks again for watching and I see you in the next video. Ciao.